fractions decreases. Okay? Now, I did this example because I wanted to have a relatively clean example with which to play. Okay, so let's do the error bound for the Simpsons. So absolute E sub S. Now, what's this thing again? Remember? It's going to be less than or equal. We get that same K, but only now it's B minus A to the fifth, right? Divided by this weird number, 180. And then this is N to the fourth, right? If I stumble back this way, I can double check. Remember, we got this guy. Now, here's the nasty part. Let's change colors. Here's the nasty part. Yuck. I've got a, I got to take two more derivatives. Well, I'm not afraid. If f double prime of x was 6 over x to the fourth, let's stumble over here and take a couple more derivatives. So what did we know? We know that f double prime of x is equal to 6 over, did I say 6x to the fourth? I meant 6 over x to the fourth, right? So f, the third derivative at x, again, think of this as 6x to the negative 4. This is negative 24x to the negative fifth. And <clears throat> f, uh, let's see, the fourth derivative of x is going to be what? A positive 120x to the negative sixth, which is 120 over x to the sixth. Same shape of curve. It looks like that. So if I start at 1 and I finish at 9, right, and I'm looking for a k that is bigger than any of the other values of the fourth derivative, which is what I'm looking at, again, doesn't that happen at the left end? This, this graph right here is the fourth derivative of 1 over x squared. So what's that going to be? What's, this point right here is just the fourth derivative of f at 1, which we know is 120. So that implies I'm going to let k equal 120. So let's label all our stuff again. A equals 1, B equals 9, N equals 8, and K equals 120. And let's look at the error. All right, let's see. Error for the Simpsons, whoa, sorry about that, you guys, my stylus died, is less than or equal to 120 times 9 minus 1 to the fifth divided by 180 times N, which is 8. So this is 8 to the fourth, right? So this is going to be less than or equal to 120 times 8 to the fifth divided by 180 times 8 to the fourth. Cancel. I get 1 here. Let's see if I can do this in my head. What's that? 2 thirds of 8, isn't it? 2 thirds of 8, 16 thirds. So this is going to be 16 thirds. Now, I'm going to show you something that's pretty fascinating here. If you look at this thing, this is 5 and a third. Okay, and now, didn't we say that we thought that the Simpsons approximation should be more accurate than the other approximations by virtue of the way that we built it? Now, notice that this was true for the midpoint, right? Two is less than four, so my error is smaller. But notice here, the error on this one is actually bigger than both of them. And the reason that is, let me explain to you why that is, because I don't want to foster any confusion on this. It's because my delta x, because my subintervals were so wide, they were so big, that even my parabolics get out of hand. All right, I only had eight subintervals, and I and I spanned a distance of eight on the real number line with this function, and that's the reason that it missed. Now let's say that I let n be a hundred. All right. Now, I'm not going to go through that. I won't kill you guys with that. Well, I suppose I could. I mean, let me give you just a really quick example. Let's see what would happen if instead of n equaling 8 for all of these, let's do a real quick, um, do a quick uh, error analysis for the same function. Okay, so we're going to have the same k's. Let's do the, let's suppose, let's suppose that n equaled 100 instead. Okay? Now let's see what would happen. Watch this. All right, I've got my error. I'm going to do my error for my trapezoid. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that this is going to be less than. Now look, I'm just going to have, since it's the same function, I'm going to have the same k value, right? So it's going to be 6 times 8 cubed, because a and b haven't changed. That's going to be 12 times 100 squared. All right, so this is going to be 6 times 8 cubed divided by 12 times 100 squared. I'm going to have the error for the midpoint is going to be less than or equal to same 6, right, times 8 cubed, only now it's 
24 times 100 squared, correct? Again, this thing is going to be twice as accurate as this thing. In other words, the error is going to be twice as small. It's exactly the same, only my denominator is twice as big, which makes the value of the fraction twice as small. Now look at this guy. How about the error of the Simpsons? And I'll, I'll throw these on the calculator real quick here in just a sec. This is going to be less than or equal to 120 times 8 cubed divided by 180. Now, watch this. This is where it gets out of hand. I'm going to go 100 to the fourth. Okay? Now, let's go over to my calculator just for giggles. Um, I'm on the wrong page, aren't I? Let's calculate these just really quickly. Again, I don't want to create any confusion. So if I do 6, oh, bummer. Um, I need to go to my view, view. I'm going to hide that. That's what I want. If I go 6 times 8 cubed, okay, and I divide that by, i got to do parentheses, don't I? This is going to be 12 times 100 squared in paren. Now, this is equal to 0 0.025. Five, six. Now, we know by virtue of the, of the mathematics that this is going to be half as big, right? So what's that going to be? 0 0.0128, isn't it? Now, let's look at the error for the Simpsons. I'm going to go 120 times 8 to the... Wait, that's not a cube. That's a fifth. Sorry, you guys. Times 8 to the fifth, right? And divided by, now i got to throw my parentheses in, and this is going to be 180 times 100 to the fourth. And in print, whoops, back, sorry you guys, it's going to be delete, and over, and in print. And watch what happens here. Look at that, 0 0.000218. See how that works? Look at that, much smaller, much more accurate. So again, the reason that I got such kind of a janky number here, remember, I tried to create numbers that were really easy to work with. The reason I got such janky numbers is because my, so the distance of my, uh, the width of my subinterval was so big. If my width of my subinterval gets smaller, look at how much more accurate this gets. It's a really fun problem to wrap your brain around because you can really understand what's going on. Now again, we're not going to, <laughs> We're not going to do this. Now, if we wanted to figure out the actual value of the integral and see how close that we got actually got, well, we can do that, right? I mean, if I'm going to integrate from 1 to 9, 1 over x squared dx, well, what is that? Isn't that negative 1 over x? Well, now we could check that. x to the negative 1, right? If I take the derivative of that, I'll get positive 1x to the negative 2, which is 1 over x squared, and I go from 1 to 9. And this is equal to negative 1 ninth minus negative 1, actually known as plus 1, which is 8 ninths, right? 8 ninths is what? 0.888. True that? Is that correct? All right. So let's see how close we got. If I stumble back this way, remember with my approximations, um, let's see, S sub 8 was 0.926. Let's see, t sub 8 was 1.034, it was way off, and n sub 8 was about 6 tenths off. This was 4 tenths, this was 6 tenths, and this was a boatload, right? 12 tenths, <laughs> or 1 point, uh, yes, I'm sorry, not hundredths, or <laughs> not tenths, but hundredths, right? If my actual value of my integral is 0.888, right? Then I'm off on these guys by hundredths, not tenths. Sorry, you guys, I'm a little punchy today. So this is off by about four one hundredths. This guy was off by about six one hundredths, and this guy was off by about twelve one hundredths. All right, so just wanted to, actually more like fifteen one hundredths, right? Um, wanted to throw that at you. Wanted to give you an example to work with. We'll do more of these in class, because I realize this is the first time that we've ever dealt with something like this before. And it takes a little bit of practice, but we got plenty of time to go over it. All right. Again, I'm, uh, 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 I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow in class. Have a good day.